Welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider Podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Acupuncture Outsider. This is Richard Hazel and contra- uh, what should I say? Um, in contrast to last week's really long episode, this one's going to be short and sweet. I want to talk about nerve trunk stimulation for drop foot because um, probably the best thing I've seen for drop foot is to stimulate the peroneal nerve right behind the head of the fibula as opposed to the way I had done it in the past using motor points of things like uh, tib anterior, peroneals, um, extensor digitum longus, um, just to get those muscles firing. I, you know, I've seen that approach using motor points work um, over time, but I feel like if you stimulate the actual nerve trunk with a pointer device, and you find a comfortable position um, for the patient where they just feel some movement, you can turn it up to a higher frequency above 10 hertz and and get it firing really well. And the patient has very quick response, very often. I'm not going to say always, but you know, there's no always <laughs> in medicine ever. Um, so... So I I just want to highly recommend you you learn how to do it and try it, and I'm going to tell you now how to locate that that nerve trunk, and I believe it's simple enough that you'll be able to do it even without a video um, demonstrating it. You you need to palpate for the head of the fibula, and you're going to go. You're just going to roll your thumb back behind the head of the fibula and you can probably even uh, sort of strum across where that nerve bundle is going to be. You can kind of feel it. And I want you to take a needle that's at least 40 millimeters in length, if not 50. You won't need the whole needle. I like a 50 for almost everything and I use about half the needle. Um, But what you're going to do is you're going to tap that needle in pretty close to the back of that fibular head. You're you're imagining where that nerve is running so you you know you don't want to hit the back of the fibular head. head. You need a little space because you don't want to be actually hitting the nerve and you don't want your stim to be um, irritating to the nerve. You need it. You need the electric stim to kind of bleed over a little into where that nerve is without being on the nerve so that you get it you get a really strong firing of the muscles with zero discomfort so that's the goal if there's discomfort you need to uh, move your needle and just pull it back a little bit so um, you so see you find the fibular head you roll your thumb back behind the head of the fibula you may feel where that little nerve bundle is there, little ropey area, and just tap your needle right behind that. And you're going to go, oh, okay, most important thing, the easiest position for your patient is going to be side lying. So if I'm treating the right leg, then they're lying on their left side on their side, knees bent, maybe put a bolster under their knees just so they're comfortable. And then uh, it's a super easy angle for you and it's comfortable for the patient. Um, once you find that area where where you're like at one hertz or two hertz, you're moving the entire low leg, 
then I would recommend then you, you confirm that there's no discomfort and then you turn it up above 10 hertz and then you're going to just touch the needle, make it move, remove your pointer device, touch it again, make it move, re remove your pointer device. And you're going to do that repeatedly and watch as it gets stronger and stronger contractions. Now, if your patient is fine with it, meaning it makes them laugh and they don't mind, then you could hold it there longer, one, two, three seconds, something like that, to get really good strong contractions, up to maybe four or five seconds if they can tolerate it. You don't have to do that. If they're, if it's, if, if they're one of those people who just is just freaked out by the sensation, then of course you're going to have to dial it back. You might even have to consider putting it down at one hertz and just run uh, Ito um, for, you know, five, 10 minutes just pulsing. Um, I personally feel like the low hertz, the low frequency is not as effective as the high frequency when it comes to the nerve trunk stimulation for drop foot. I really think that high frequency is doing something more than just a low frequency pulse. Um, try for yourself, see if you agree. Um, that's just my opinion based on clinical experience. It's not something I read in a book. Um, so I can't tell you that, you know, there's some person who has said this is the way it has to be. But I think there are plenty of people who would agree with me that the higher frequency works better and faster uh, for something like this. So try it. Uh, next time you have a, a drop foot patient, try doing that stimulation. And you really don't have to do it for very long. You just need to get really good, strong contractions. If you're familiar with, with working on inhibited muscles like glutes or serratus anterior, then you know what it's like when you, you start getting contractions and then they get stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, you'll know this. You'll see the same thing with those low leg muscles. Um, should be the tib anterior the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus, and um, I think that that was it, the peroneals, the peroneals, and they should all, everything should fire. Oh, uh, peroneus tercius is in there. Um, yeah, you'll see them all fire at the same time. So it lifts the toes, it lifts uh, the tib anterior, and it, it'll evert a bit. It's beautiful. For somebody who's had drop foot for a while, it's it it this can be a, a real game changer. Um, so give that a try uh, next time you have somebody with drop foot and see if you don't agree that this is the best way and uh, best course of action for treating drop foot. Okay, that see short and sweet. That's it for today. Um, have a great week. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you.